Welcome, welcome to The Daily Show. Craig Kilborn is on assignment in Kuala Lumpur. I'm John Stewart. <laughs> Coming up on today's show, Stephen Colbert with the latest analysis out of Washington. Beth Littleford interviews the original Munchkins. And Michael J. Fox is my first guest, and he's a nice man for doing it. Well, that was January 1999. John Stewart taking over the helm of The Daily Show. Now, think back. The euro currency was just introduced. Bill Clinton was still in office. And YouTube was still six years away from going online. Well, a lot has changed since then, but in many ways, John Stewart has not. He signs off tonight. And Rachel Sklar is a cultural commentator who joins us to talk about his departure from Muskoka, Ontario. Rachel, hello to you. Hi. Well, you know, this is the last day for John Stewart, and many people are, of course, talking about the legacy he leaves behind. But in your opinion, how did he change the conversation? Well, I mean, John Stewart changed many conversations every night because he had an unmissable show, particularly for the media and political elite. But I think uh, that perhaps his most lasting legacy will be that of something that I like to call advocacy comedy, because um, he really pioneered a mainstream media approach to comedy using the news of the day uh, basically to, to skewer it in um, in a sort of a, in real time in the 24-hour news cycle, and John Stewart was sort of the 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 first one. The Daily Show, when he you know that, that clip you just showed with um, with him taking over for Kilborn, the Daily Show had previously been very spoofy, and slowly as John Stewart found his voice, which many will you know have have pinpointed to the post 9/11 show. Um, uh, where, which is sort of a, a sort of a like comedy tinged with this righteous anger. Uh, John Stewart sort of found his voice as really an advocacy commentator, very righteous, uh, using comedy as the vehicle for making the point of view known. And uh, and from the Daily Show was then spawned the Colbert Report, which also had a very definite point of view. And and then that that really became. A style of comedy that we've now seen in Comedy Central's uh, the the nightly show with Larry and Wilmore, another Comedy Central mm -hmm. uh, Daily Show alum, and last week tonight with John Oliver, who of course is another Daily Show alum. Mm -hmm. So many alumni going on to to other projects that carry on that legacy, as you say. But I have to say, when we talk about John Stewart's departure, I think a few months back, when David Letterman departed, there was all this talk that the people that would miss him the most were frat boys in the '80s who are now adults. When we talk about John Stewart, who is going to miss him the most? Do you think? That's funny, you know. In, in the Letterman coverage, I don't, I don't remember that. I wasn't a frat boy in the '80s, but I, I definitely miss Letterman. Uh, I think that that what John Stewart and David Letterman actually have in common in terms of their their comedy has been sort of an uh, a, a real intelligence and a refusal to dumb that intelligence down. And I think that is one of the reasons, uh, you know, that was oft cited for why Jay Leno overtook Letterman, and maybe one of the reasons why. Uh, the Daily Show thrived so much because it did so on Comedy Central, which is a cable network, and uh, and so the the number of viewers. I mean, for most of its, I, I don't know what the most recent numbers are, but but the Daily Show tended to average about a million, a million and a half viewers a night, uh, as uh, for the most part during during its run. And those are those are great numbers for cable, but small numbers for network. And I think you know speaks to the ability of. Um, a comedian on cable to to speak to the height of their intelligence for a smaller audience. Um, but in terms of who's going to miss John Stewart, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh, the progressive <laughs> writers and and media people and activists for sure, because uh, for the the large part on the Daily Show, although John Stewart claimed to have taken shots at everyone, and and they really did, for practical purposes, the GOP, the Republicans, uh, and 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 that sort of wave was usually targeted by the Daily Show. So anybody who fights against the Re Republicans and the conservative movement is probably going to miss the the particular um, zeal with which the the Daily Show and John Stewart went after them. Well, and that raises an interesting question about the legacy, because uh, one wonders if The Daily Show can continue to carry the mantle that John Stewart helped create, or does it pass on to another program, or does it pass on to a whole different medium? Uh, is this a generational change? I think that the answer to that is still very much up in the air. I mean, uh, the, 
technically, the, John Stewart is leaving, and he is being succeeded by Trevor Noah, who is a, a junior correspondent for the show. Hasn't really, you know, made his mark uh, that much beyond, I guess, the few people who know him knew him well enough to hire him. Um, uh, so, so that remains to be seen. Obviously, the, the the staff members and the producers and writers on the Daily Show, many of them will stay on. Um, but that show will has yet to invent itself. We know what what Stephen Colbert is. We certainly knew him from his Comedy Central show, but we don't exactly know what Stephen Colbert's late night show on CBS, Taking Over for Letterman, is going to look like. We have a we have a sense, and and I I think we can expect some real differentiation with the, with the Colbert. Uh, version of the the late night show then from say Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon focuses on super fun, light, happy fare. Uh, Stephen Colbert really is like again a fiercely intelligent comedian and really does does not shrink from mm -hmm. uh, you know really grappling with issues um, and and being edgy about how doing so. Uh, and then uh, you know there's there's last week of, last week tonight with John Oliver which. Um, I, I think might pull off an upset and, and nab the Emmy this year, despite the sort of the, the, the romanticism of, of favoriting, favoring mm -hmm. uh, Letterman mm -hmm. or The Daily Show or The Colbert Report. I, I mean, last week tonight has really has, has made its mark and each week is, is very purely an, an, an advocacy outlet for some issue or okay. other. And it's, it's so, so who knows what we'll see, but I think you're quite right when you say that it could be any other medium because now we're in a media world that doesn't require that people uh, consume their, their late night TV shows uh, on TV or even during late night. Okay, Rachel, we'll leave it there. Thank you for the insight. That is cultural commentator Rachel Sklar joining us from Muskoka, Ontario.